like NFTs, you know, for the, if you heard what NFTs are now, you can do artwork and I don't know, gosh, uh, there, there's so much things that are coming out. So they're designing the blockchain, you know, to, to be have more uses because, well, it really, even though it's writing the coattails of Dogecoin, it's not really to be meant, it's not really meant as a joke. But the c cool thing and the beautiful thing right now is that you can buy a crap load of them right now for pennies and um, like I was telling you there was 150,000 signatures requesting Robin Hood to list Shiba Inu well Coinbase beat them to the punch yes the, the big kahuna of all crypto exchanges you know Coinbase somehow they, they paid attention to what was going on and right now it's available only on what is it Coinbase Pro and They've had a little glitches there, but the thing is, is that Coinbase already made the big move and accepted it. Coinbase is usually the ultimate goal for every cryptocurrency. So Shiba Inu is already there. And the fact thing, the fact is that right now, you could probably, I don't know, what you spend on a going out to eat, like 50 bucks, you can get a whole mess of them. In fact, uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to... Uh, like I said, I'm not professional. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do, what not to do. But I'm just giving you a little heads up of, uh, you know, what you could do. And you never know. You might just be very fortunate. You know, if I if I would have held on to my 200,000 Dogecoin right now, I have over 140 Gs right now. Or maybe, well, right now that it's a 29 cents, I mean... Well, it'd be like what twenty nine thousand twenty nine. Okay, if I if I was still holding, of course, I I know me. I probably w when it hit seventy cents, I would have taken some out, not all of it, because I don't want the whole system to crash down. But I would have taken profits. But we could could have made a lot more money. I'm like, and once again, I'm not telling you what to do or what not to do, but just an example right now. Um, an example of what you could do right now with Chiva Inu. Uh, S H I B is the 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 t the tick symbol, I guess. Uh, the ticker. Nah, you know how stocks have a ticker. Uh, Doge is D O G E. This is S H I B. Anyway, all I'm saying. This is uh, I, I use Crypto.com. I'm not endorsing them. They're not my. All I'm saying is that there's other options. Eventually, you'll be able to get this on Coinbase in a few weeks because Coinbase already listed Shib. So in a few weeks, uh, you should be able to, uh, the regular population, you know, can use regular Coinbase.com to get shit. But what I'm saying, if I'm saying anything, right now, you could get, as of right now, as I'm speaking, the price right now, for $7.64 on Crypto.com, you could get 1 million, 1 million units, 1 million coins. That's how cheap they are right now. Um, now, Dogecoin, it took 10 years to get to a penny. Of course, in uh, Dogecoin's defense, Dogecoin was made in 2013. Not many of us knew what cryptocurrencies were. I mean, in fact, uh, Bitcoin, uh, the, the king of all cryptos, uh, started in 2011. I didn't know there was such thing as Bitcoin in 2011. I mean, none of us really knew much about Bitcoin. In fact, I didn't know anything about Bitcoin until that article on the f infamous uh, pizza, super expensive pizza with that kid that convinced the the, the pizza parlor to take a, um, Bitcoin. And anyway, uh, all I'm saying is that Dogecoin, it took a while for it to grow as big because not many people were aware of cryptocurrencies. Fast forward to this time, a lot of us, you've heard of Dogecoin because Dogecoin has been on the news. Bitcoin, Ethereum, we are a little bit more aware of what cryptocurrencies are. So now Jib is on Coinbase and if it gets listed on Robinhood, right now, like I said, as of right now, I told you with about $7.64, $7 you could grab 1 million units. And you're saying, well, that's practically nothing. Yeah, but imagine, imagine that you... That you spend, decide to go to Crypto.com or Coinbase later. Or well, right now Crypto.com is where I'm getting it. But let's say that you decided to buy 1 million units. 
for seven bucks. Then you just held on to it. You forgot about them. You left them there by themselves. And then, I don't know, uh, a year or two later, you find out that Shiba Inu has hit one one penny. I'm not saying you're... Deci- like I said, I'm not selling you a get-rich-quick scheme. I'm not telling you to invest. I'm not telling you not to invest. In fact, this is not financial advice. But let's just say that you do buy seven bucks worth of seven eight bucks worth of chip you get a million units and then you just forget about it you you say yeah whatever you know yeah okay yeah just just for the hell of it i went to crypto.com and i got me a million units of shit for seven bucks you can probably you should probably buy more i'm just saying but i'm not telling you what you should do but let's say that you just buy seven bucks worth of it okay there, there's a little fee right there so when it's all said and done it's a transaction under 10 bucks And uh, you just hold on to them and forget about them. And you wake up, let's say, a year down the line, two years down the line. You go to check your crypto.com or your your crypto wallet and find out that your 1 million units achieved are not worth a penny each, which in U.S. dollars would be 10,000. Now, let's say that you got a little bit greedier and you bought $70 $70 worth of... uh, in, instead of uh, instead of just one million, let's say that you bought well ten million. Because let's say yeah, you, you're like you know what? I can spend seventy, eighty bucks on a night out on the town. I'm gonna deprive myself of of McDonald's or this and that or whatever. I'm not going to the movies this weekend, and I'm gonna spend those eighty bucks and buy some cheap Chiba Inu, Chiba Inu, whatever you know the Dutch coin killer. Which in reality, I would say it's more like Doge's little brother, because a lot of us that hold Doge have embraced SHIB, because some of us missed out the opportunity on Doge, and we're hoping, we've seen what it, what can be done, and what happened to Doge, maybe it's not going to happen the same way, the way it happened with Dogecoin, but the, the SHIB, it, it has so much potential. Anyway, just... Once again, let's get back to what I, the hypothetical scenario I'm giving you. Let's say that you spent 70 bucks, so you get 10 million units, and you leave them alone for the next two, three years. And one day you look into your crypto wallet and find out that it's worth a penny each. Your 70, 80 bucks just turn into $100,000. Sure, you cash out. Obviously, you're going to have to save some of that money because, you know, or uh, uh, wherever you're, I'm sure you got to pay taxes. It doesn't matter where you live, what country you're in. I mean, if you're in the U.S., Uncle Sam will be sticking out his hand saying, gimme. But um, I'm just saying, just something to think about, something to consider. Anyway, uh, I'm not peddling cryptocurrencies here. Like I said, I'm not telling you you should buy. I'm not telling you you shouldn't. I'm just putting it out there. You know, I, I'm very enthusiastic about cryptocurrencies. I see it as a way for us, the little guys, to build generational wealth. And right now, I think that the big guys, the the big 1%, the, the wealth, the old money has realized that. And they are, right now, most of the uh, whales, the, what they call the, the guys that hold most of the cryptocurrency, uh, I think uh, it's big institutions, big old money people that are, crashing the market right now trying to get the little guy out trying to discourage you so that they can come in and swoop it up at a lower price and then basically take control of the whole crypto market currency i mean uh, that's uh i'm not the only one that says that go over youtube there's uh you know i was there's this kid i like to listen to uh Mar- matt wallace he reminds me of a younger kid i used to know uh uh, when I when I was a younger youngster, you know, I used to work at a library. You know, I was security at a library, and this kid, um, he was one of the uh, the clerks there. He worked part time. He was going to school, but this Matt Wallace kid reminds me of this kid. Now, the way this Matt Wallace kid is enthusiastic about Dogecoin and cryptocurrencies, this kid was enthusiastic about the Harry Potter books back then, and he kept trying to push everybody to read the Harry Potter books. I remember he uh, he checked it out for me once, and. Uh, I remember joking around with him like, oh, no, sorry, kid, I, I can't do this. I was four pages into the book and I already feel like sacrificing a cat outside in the parking lot. I, I was just giving him crap. Actually, uh, whoa. 
So anyway, uh, as I was saying, if I'm saying anything, uh, this Matt Wallace kid, uh, he's on YouTube. I'm sure you you can find him. You know, Glasses Kid. I think that's where they got the "Don't go into the moon" thing. You know, I'm pretty. You know that Elon Musk thing on SNL. I'm sure he was uh, uh, channeling Matt Wallace. Anyway, bottom line, what I'm saying, if I'm saying anything, is uh, that's something to think about. You may want to do it. You may not want to do it. You know, right now, I wish I would have held on to my 200,000 Dogecoins. I wish I hadn't like it. Well, because sometimes, yeah, it's discouraging when you see that you put in money and then it starts going down. I mean, and I think uh, during the time that I took the advice to buy the Ford uh, stocks was one of those times when Dogecoin was running low and my 600 bucks that I had very very it it took me a while to nickel and dime my way up to 600 bucks i mean it was being eaten away so i was like yeah i should take my money and put it into something safe like uh, ford ford's been around for a while and no complaints like i said it paid off it paid off not as much as holding on to my my dogecoin would have if i you know that that's the hard part, you know, especially if you're like me, that you work paycheck to paycheck. And I mean, you put your heart and earn money into something. When you see it go down, it, it, it's hard. I mean, I, so anyway, uh, I feel that uh, we've been given a second opportunity with this uh, chip. And a lot of the Doge community, even though it was like brought up to be like pitted against like Doge versus chip. I, I think what has happened more is... Uh, the Doge community has embraced Shiv, like especially those of us who still hold Doge and missed out on the bigger opportunities, you know, because we kept taking profits because, well, you know, why not? You know, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, I would have wished uh, I could, could go back and tell tell my myself a New Year's Day, like, whatever you do. Actually, no, I would have to go back to last uh, a year ago summer and be like that conversation you're having with your friend there where he tells you to buy ford yes it makes sense it's good but you're gonna miss out on something bigger now don't don't we all wish we could do that right no it it, it can't we can't do that but shiba inu might be i don't know something that you might want to consider i'm not saying you should i'm not saying you shouldn't i'm just saying anyway uh you know Till next time, I mean, uh, live each day like it's your last one, because it very well could be. Now, what does that really mean? Live each day to the last one. Does that mean that, oh, well, you know, this could be my last day. Let's go rob some banks. No, not not really. Uh, Do what makes you feel happy, you know, and that is different for everybody. You know, there are some sick individuals like me who like to work every fucking day because it makes me feel that I'm doing something to lay the foundations for my family to have a better future. You know, uh, I, I guess growing up in a family where, uh, you know, dad wasn't really there. And uh, don't get me wrong. I love my dad. I'm not going to sit here and badmouth my dad. Like I said, my dad was my dad. He did what he did. And uh, like I said, towards I, I've talked about this before the last 15 years of his life. Uh, we, we, we used to talk on the phone every day and uh, I miss him. Even though he wasn't, he, my dad would never win a Dad of the Year award because, let's face it, he wasn't. But I still love him. That's my dad. There's a lot of things that I learned uh, thanks to him. And, you know, it is what it is. All I'm saying, wow, is that, you know, everybody does different things uh, to relax, to unwind. So I guess me uh, growing up in a very unstable home. Not knowing that, hey, do, do we have money for the rent? Are we going to have a roof over our heads next month? You know, kind of created this, uh, you could say, trauma. But in a sense, it, it, it pushed me to work hard, to stick, uh, whoa, cursory overload music. It's a little hint here that we're getting ready to do some stuff. All I'm saying is, um, all I'm saying is, is that if I'm saying anything, is that it pushed me to work hard to provide a better future for my family. So that my kids wouldn't be worried about, hey, uh, what's going to happen to us? Um, have I been a perfect father? I doubt it. No, nobody is. Um, but one thing is, I love my kids. I love I love every one of you. And everybody that's listening right now, thank you for tuning in as always. Uh, 
you know, it's a, we're going to call this episode a new beginning. Usually this, ep- I used to do bite-sized podcasts about 30, 20.